Hello, my sweet shabby loving friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Each week I share kinda shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. Now before I get into this little thrift haul that I want to share with you, I'd like to invite you to go to my kinda shabby crafty inspirations Facebook page. This was a page that I originally had that I was using for family and friends, but I've decided that I want to invite you guys, so I would like to extend my invitation for you to join that Facebook group page. Now I want to share with you a little thrift haul that Mr. Shabby and I did. Some of these are actually going to be getting a makeover in today's video. First up, rolling pins can't go wrong with rolling pins and this one we will be doing in today's video i have just a lid from a pot i love using these to make little bird feeders and you use a mason jar and one of these little babies and we're going to be doing that in today's video as well i got this isn't that pretty i haven't quite decided what i'm going to do with that if i figure it out by the end of this video we'll do it today if not we'll do it at another time can't go wrong with various laces i always find a good deal on my lace at the thrift store i have all of these gorgeous christmas ornaments there's a set of 12 in here how cute is that and they were a dozen of those for four bucks then look at this baby oh my goodness i haven't decided i may not sell this i may stick a christmas tree in it and put it on my front porch Next up are these gorgeous candlesticks. These are going to be painted in today's video, so we're gonna paint and distress those. Forgot to tell you, this was three bucks. This was one dollar. This was also a dollar. The laces were anywhere from a dollar to a dollar fifty each. This was two dollars. This was four dollars. This cute little plaster, it's brand new, still has a tags on it. These things are still sold at Michael's for $14.99 and I paid two bucks for it. Then I paid two dollars for this. I'm not even sure what it is. If you gals know what this is, let me know in the comments. Look how pretty that is. It's actually quite heavy as well. I've got this gorgeous basket. Look how pretty this is. And this thing is really sturdy. It's in very good shape. And I got this for six bucks. A lot of this was not the best deal that I could have gotten, but it is called Spectrum Thrift Store and they support and also employ people on the autism spectrum. So I don't mind paying a little bit more because I know all of my money will be going to a good cause. So I am going to be getting this cleaned up and I'll adjust the camera angle and we'll go ahead and get these projects started. Now these were extremely shiny. So I took some fine grit sandpaper and just roughed it up just a little bit so that my paint would adhere a little better. And of course you'll see that I have taped these off. I have seen gals on YouTube, especially Jamie Ray, buddy, she can take a brush and just paint those handles on her rolling pins without a problem. I am not that girl. I'm going to be using the bare chalk paint that I pick up from Home Depot. And I actually had this color matched to my drapes over here. I'm just gonna start at the base and just work from the bottom to the top. And I'm gonna put two coats on this. We're also going to be sealing it with some polycrylic. I'm just gonna take my brush and just gently tap that on the top like that. And then smooth out my strokes this way. And I think that is such a pretty vintage looking color for a kitchen. And I'm gonna paint the other end. And then I'll put this aside and we'll get started on our candlesticks. And now we're gonna move along to our candlesticks. And I really like all of the detailing on these. This is a nice heavy resin. And if the base had been resin, I would not have taped these off. But this is velvet, so I went ahead and taped that off so I would not have to worry about trying to get paint off of velvet. I'm going to be using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. And I'm just gonna start putting my paint on there. And then this will be easy to wet distress. And then you wanna smooth out your brush strokes because you can see it gets kind of drippy 
on the corners there. So I'm just going to smooth that out. Doing corners can be a little bit of a booger. I like using my little Lazy Susan. It just smooths all of that paint right out. And I'm going to set this aside to let this area dry. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I think that is going to be very, very pretty. All right, we're going to set these off to the side to dry, and then we're going to move on to our next project. We're going to be upcycling this pot lid, and this is a cute and simple project. It's basically going to be gluing that onto a quart size mason jar, and then you'll have, they were out of the feeder bases, but this is the watering base, and you just screw your mason jar onto that base and then we're going to glue that on there and it is just so so cute this is an example of other things that you can look for this actually belongs to one of my beverage dispensers but as long as it has something that you can put a hook through how cute would that be Unfortunately, I need this for my beverage dispenser, but that would just be adorable. I like to use E6000 and Quick Grip because the Quick Grip is going to give it more of an immediate adhesion, and then the E6000, of course, is going to harden over time. And nestle this part into the bean so it does not move on you. Then you'll take your E6000 and you're going to put it all along the ridged rim right here. And you want to make sure you've got a generous coat. And I like to put it a little bit on the outside of that ridge and then on the inside just to make sure I am going to have good adhesion. Then I take some quick grip and put it just in a couple of places. And now that I have this down like this, I can actually hover and see what the middle is. And then I'm going to push down and really work that into that glass and into the lid. And then I'm just going to hold. Now it's not going to set up with me holding it, but I do want to apply some pressure to it for at least 15 to 20 seconds. And then I want to shake it a little bit and it doesn't move then I know that that's going to be okay. Now I'm just going to turn it this way so the weight of the lid will press down onto the mason jar and I'm going to let that cure for 24 hours. Now if this were a decor piece you could paint these, you could put greenery and ribbon on here, but because I intend for this to actually be used by birds I will not put any kind of embellishments or paint on there, anything that could possibly harm one of our little feathered friends. So I'm going to let this cure. You're going to move on to our next project. I had painted this from a thrift flip a couple of videos back, and I can link that for you guys below. And I really loved how that turned out. But I think that one of these new Iron Orchid designs cameo molds may look really good on there. So I'm actually going to mold a few of these and figure out which one is going to look better. You'll take your cornstarch and apply it into the areas that you want to mold and then tap out your excess. So you want to soften it in your hand and pinch off a section. You really don't need that much. I'm going to kind of flatten it out and start putting it in there. Sometimes when you get that cornstarch in there, the clay doesn't even really want to stick down in there. They have what's called a micro rim, this little raised edge here, and that really helps to cut that clay from around your design so you're not wasting anything. And now I'm going to take one of my Bondo spreaders, push that in there, and remove the excess from the back. Let's roll that. Oh goodness! That is gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? Let's see. 
that's pretty but I think I may want something bigger this one's really big so let me try that one yes that looks much better I'm gonna decide where I want it I'm gonna let it dry just a little bit because if I push down on it now it's going to distort this image I've got one more project that I want us to do and we'll go ahead and get started on that one so a couple videos ago Mr. Shabby and cousin Billy had gone thrifting and this is one of the items that they brought back for me I love the rusted metal piece here I like the color of the wood down here but that bright pink is just not doing it for me so I'm gonna try to pop this off and paint this and just see if I can't give this a shabby chic makeover okay that's a good start now I'm gonna see if I can't get these off Whoop! don't know where it went I'll find it when I vacuum I will sand all of this make all of that surface there smooth and uh, we'll come back to this tomorrow okay friends before we move on to completing these projects here I wanted to show you what mr. shabby has been up to in the garage now you can see this gorgeous wooden trio here of Christmas trees and he does such a phenomenal job he does the Craig jig with the pocket hole so none of those screws show the base that he does he actually takes his router and he routes out all of the wood so he is quite talented in the woodworking department anytime you're out thrifting if you see a gorgeous piece of trim baseboard trim pick it up he is going to be taking these and cutting it into he's going to use a 30 degree angle to cut little Christmas trees for me because it has this edge here it's going to stand up quite nicely and it's just going to look cute on a bookshelf or a table or a countertop your mantle and so that's what he's going to be doing with that the remaining pieces that are between the Christmas trees not sure what I'm going to do with those yet but you can rest assured nothing goes to waste around this house and I stand corrected Mr. Shabby just informed me baby that ain't baseboard that is door casing trim so you can pick up your own door trim and if you've got a handy Mr. Shabby he could cut you some Christmas trees and I have two more interesting pieces of wood here and I asked Mr. Shabby before I started labeling these he said he doesn't even know what the original use for these were but these are nice big thick decorative pieces of wood and I just anytime I find anything interesting like this I always buy it he is going to rip this in half for me he's going to cut it into I think I may have decided on four inch sections and I'm gonna make Christmas ornaments out of them so that is going to be a cute idea too so stick around we still have a lot of interesting projects to go in this video so I'll be using the Minwax polyacrylic in the mat and you just want to give it a little stir you don't want to shake your poly because that would introduce bubbles into your project pour a little into a container and I'm just gonna start at the bottom and brush down pat the top but if you have a hole for the hanger whenever you brush that poly across that it's going to want to pull right there so just thin out any pooling in that hanging hole that looks good so I'm going to set that aside and let that dry we'll move on to completing all this stuff we got over here and we're going to be putting the color plaster on here that's one of my favorite colors I think that looks good so we're just gonna set that to the side and let that dry okay now we're gonna go ahead and wet distress our candlesticks and I have a damp rag here I'm just gonna start here at the edge and just start wiping especially here on the corners and you can see how it just easily distresses that and just brings back some of that original paint that's looking really good so that's what I'm gonna do is just sit here and continue wet distressing these two candlesticks and then we'll move on to our pot 
So I am really pleased with how these turned out. I thought that that looks really, really good. Now I'm going to set these aside because I have used a wet rag to go over and distress these. I want these to dry before I put my wax on top of those. Now for this beauty, look how gorgeous that turned out. And I am so sorry that I did not film gluing this on. So I'll be using my Folk Art Home Decor Wax, and this is clear wax. And I am using smaller wax brushes. It's going to allow me to get into those details a little better. And my trusty bag of beans helps to hold everything for me so it doesn't roll all over my table. And just go around and dab off the excess and just wipe that back. And now we'll be making our own gray wax. So I'm gonna pour out a little bit of the clear wax onto my plate. I'm gonna get a little bit of paint and put that in there and mix it. And I'm going to take a smaller, stiff, bristled brush, and I'm going to get it all into those recesses. And that looks like a mess. But when we take our rag and we start wiping it back, that wax, the gray wax, is just left in the recesses there. And it's so pretty. So now that I have the gray all in those recesses, I'm going to go back over it with white wax. And I think the combination of that white wax and that gray wax together just looks so pretty. We'll let that dry and then we'll put some flowers in it and we'll get that all staged up. So after the wax dried, I was not happy with it. I thought it still looked a little too dark. So I went back over it with some of the plaster paint and I think it toned that down really nicely. You can still see the gray in the recesses without it looking so dark. So I like that much better. We're going to apply some of the butcher block conditioner to our rolling pin. So I'm just going to put a little bit on a lint free cloth and then I'm going to rub it in. Now this rolling pin still felt like the wood was moisturized, but I always like to add that extra layer of protection anytime I am reselling these because it just makes it look more professional. And we're going to let that sit for a little bit and then I'll come back and buff off the excess. Now we're going to be using our Folk Art Home Decor Wax. And this is the clear wax. So I pour out just a little bit of the wax, work it into my bristles, rub it around on a lint-free cloth just to really work the wax into the bristles. And then we're just going to start applying our wax. And this is going to help protect your painted surface. You could also do a spray-on poly coat if you wanted to. But I just like brushing on the wax. I think it just gives it such a beautiful soft finish. So I'm going to continue just waxing our candlesticks here and then we'll come back and buff that off. I like to use just a shoe polish brush and when you use a brush like this it just gives it such a beautiful soft smooth almost feels like glass. For our cross I am taking some fine grit sandpaper and I am going around the edges here, just enough to give it some interest. So when I put the holes in our medallion back over these little nails right here, that is not going to hold that in place any longer. I had to use the quick grip and put that all along the touch points on the outside here. Then I took my glue gun and squeezed that into the holes there on top of those nails, I finally got it to stay. And I've got just a whole bunch of pretty pink buttons here and I'm going to lay them out how I like it. I'm going to glue those in place and I think that is going to look so much better. So I've got to go back and clean up some excess glue and I also removed the tape to see how that looked and I think that it turned out pretty cute. 
I am pretty satisfied with that. Mr. Shabby got all these cute little, he got, I think maybe six of these cut out. I am not going to have time to finish these in today's video. It's just going to run too long. So I will finish these in another video. So we're going to go ahead and set those aside and just move on to our final project. This is a Pinterest inspired project. I think you're going to love how it turns out. I'm going to start by base coating in the color silver lining. It is dark outside now, so we are going to come back tomorrow and apply various shades of gray and this hazelnut brown with these little sponges to add some interest and texture to our board. Now that our base coat is dry, we are going to be adding this little beautiful detail here to our board using the Iron Orchid Designs Classic Elements Mold. I'm going to put a little bit of cornstarch in there, tap out the excess, and then you just start putting your clay down into your mold. And because this is going on wood, I want it to have a flat back. So I'm going to rub it with my Bondo spreader just to get it flat on the back and to remove some excess clay as well. And I'm going to use a bamboo skewer because sometimes the smaller parts need just a little help coming out of the mold. And there we go. Look how pretty that is. I'm going to make one more off camera and then we're going to get these applied to our board. So I've let these set up for about 30 minutes so that way they're still pliable but they're firm enough that when I put some pressure on them to glue them down, it's not going to distort my image. I'm just going to use some of the tight bond glue, put a little bit on the back and spread it around with a small brush. And now we're going to carefully pick them up and place them back on our board. And then just lightly push down so I can get all of that little element stuck down to my wood. And I'm going to let these dry for about an hour and then we'll come back and start painting. I just realized that I did this whole board and I had not pushed record. So I'm just going to have to walk you through the steps of what I did. I took the Waverly Steel, Mineral, and hazelnut. I dipped it into the same little sponge just to create an aged appearance with that paint. I splotched it all over. Now I'm going back and I'm just using just the sponge itself and I'm kind of doing it in a wiping motion because now I want to kind of spread that paint out a little bit so it doesn't just look like splotches. I'm leaving this middle here a little bare because we're going to be stamping the word antiques in the middle. But I wanted this to have a nice aged, almost rusted appearance and that's what you get when you blend all of those colors and then you come back in with the hazelnut on top of that gray and it almost looks like rust. So with a light touch, I'm going on the edges again with the hazelnut. Isn't that pretty? And then we'll use our black ink to stamp the word antiques in there. That's going to just look great. I think we're going to go back in with the color mineral and dab that off and put some more mineral in here to bring a little bit of lightness. And now we're just going to keep dabbing to blend that in. And you just keep adding until you get the look that you're going for. Maybe you don't even know what look you're going for. Just keep playing around with it until it looks good to you. And that is just a nice, properly aged looking board. So I'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back and stamp our word antiques across the middle. I have laid out the letters how I like them. And normally I would use my long quilting ruler. However, because of my appliques on either end there, that's not going to be able to go down in between those clay appliques. So I'm going to have to stamp these a few letters at a time. I already have ant on there and I've got it lined up. 
So when I put this 4 mark here, right on there, it's going to lay in line with all these other letters. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up the back of my stamps here. I'm just going to wipe off the excess because I don't want that on my board. I'm going to hover this over here. And again, where the 4 inch measurement is here, and I'm going to place that 4 right along the edge of my board. Then I'm going to tilt it and press in my ink on my letters. And when I am stamping wood, I do press a little more firmly. And now I'm going to lift straight up. That looks great. And I'm going to let that ink set up and dry just a little bit before I attempt these other letters because I don't want to make a mess. Now that these are dry, we're going to move on to our next three letters here. I'm going to take and make sure that the side of the T right here aligns up with the 7 inch mark here. Then I'm going to place the 4 inch mark at the bottom. Lay that down to pick up my next three letters. We're going to ink those up. Clean up just a little excess around those letters. I'm going to hover over. Make sure that I have that aligned before I set those down. Now I'm going to tip that just like that and then start rubbing my fingers over the other letters here. Again, pressing a little firmly to make sure that I get that ink all into that wood. Looks good, so now we're going to lift straight up. Mm -hmm. That's looking really good so far. And we've got our last two letters left. So I'm going to butt this up against my clay ornament. Move it over just a hair so when I lay that down, it will lay flat. Make sure my 4 inch mark is all along the bottom. Press that down and pick up my last two letters. Make sure that's going to fit right there. Put my 4 along the bottom. Lay it down and press. And lift straight up. And that is just gorgeous. I love that. I hope this week's video gave you some ideas for ways you can update some things in your home too. As always, I thank you for being here and I truly appreciate you watching. 
Come back next week for more kind of shabby but always chic, crafty inspirations. And until then, my sweet friends, be blessed.